Have you heard of the City of a Thousand Planets? It's crazy. So the story goes something like this. In the not too distant future, a space station is constructed in orbit of Earth. Maybe it's an evolution of the International Space Station, maybe it's a different one altogether, I don't know, and it doesn't really matter. Anyhow, as more and more nations on Earth develop their own space program, this station grows larger and larger. It gets artificial gravity, people from every country are welcomed aboard, and eventually it becomes a meeting place not only for the peoples of Earth, but for all the peoples of the universe. Now unified under the United Human Federation, Earth meets some weird lizard-looking things, some guys in cool suits, some robots, the gang's all here. Eventually though, this space station has gotten so big that it poses a danger to Earth, and it's sent to float along something called the Magellan Current to journey into the unknown as a beacon of peace and knowledge and culture and such. But you don't have to take my word for it, there's a great sequence publicly available that goes over all this. And on this episode of Incoming, I'd like to take a bit of a deeper look into that footage and see what details we can pick out. So if you want, pause this video, watch that one, and then meet back here. You'll find the link in the description. Okay, so now that we're all caught up, there's probably a few questions that stand out. Such as, why do they just keep adding stuff onto what would eventually become a centuries-old space station? Why wouldn't they just build a new one from scratch? Why would they decide to send that giant space station and millions of people just floating out into the unknown? Why not just tow it further out into the solar system? What benefit is there to having that thing just kinda wandering around the galaxy? What if it runs out of food or air or whatever? Now these are all good questions, and some of them might have answers. But the one I'm interested in is, what's going on with the flags? I'm not certain, but I suspect that whoever is in charge of branding the United Human Federation is just super lazy, and I'm going to attempt to prove it. So let's go back to the shot. We see a Chinese spacecraft approaching the station. How do we know it's Chinese? Well, there's a modern day People's Republic of China flag on the side of it. Well, that's simple enough. Except, what's going on in this shot? The Chinese astronauts have a different flag on their spacesuits. Okay, so maybe the Chinese flag received an update, but the spacecraft wasn't repainted yet. Maybe. It seems weird there wouldn't be time just to slap on a new coat of paint, but it's possible. And the same thing is going on with the American spacesuits. They feature a seemingly future version of the American flag. So I'm guessing this is intended to show the evolution of political states on Earth, and for whatever reason, that first shot of the Chinese spacecraft wasn't changed to account for that. And, you know, it makes sense. Flags do change over time, and later on in the sequence, we do see a variant of the Ukrainian flag. It's just a cool little bit of world building. But then what's going on with this flag? I mean, first off, it's terrible. Generally, when you're creating a flag meant to represent all of humanity, a good rule of thumb would be to embrace shared symbolism and values, creating a brand new symbol to unite humanity, instead of trying to individually represent every constituent nation or state. There's around 206 sovereign states. Trying to represent each one individually on a flag can only end in a mess. That's why the flag of the European Union looks like this, and not like this. Also, the attempt at representing every human nation on Earth, by including the flag of every nation on Earth, is immediately ruined by having United Human Federation written only in English. I've talked about before why this is a dumb idea, but I guess whoever designed this flag didn't catch that episode. But things continue to get worse the more you analyze this flag. The seal of the United Human Federation actually overlaps and covers up many of the background national flags. You can tell because you can see where a few have only their corners or sides visible. This is deeply disrespectful on so many levels. Can you imagine being a citizen of a country whose flag got covered up? It would be like if you won a contest to appear on the calendar of your favorite beer brand, only to find a sticker on your face. Or maybe like appearing in a commercial for your employer, only you're covered up by the corporate logo. If the flag of your interstellar civilization can be compared to a recurring visual gag, somebody didn't do their job. But it just keeps going. Let's zoom and enhance Quadrant Gamma Zulu 7. Ah oh, crap, that looks like garbage. Okay, well, you might have to take my word for it here, but this flag gets even worse. 
Remember how the Chinese, American, and Ukrainian flags were updated on those spacesuits to reflect the changing political situation on Earth? Well, somebody forgot to update the United Human Federation flag because they're still using the old ones. In fact, all the flags included are the ones from our own modern world, with no changes whatsoever. With one exception. Can you guess which country it is and why they did it? Let's talk about Nepal for a second. Nepal's flag is awesome. Not only is it a great design, but it's the only national flag in the world that hasn't conformed to the typical rectangle or square aspect ratio. You see, flags were predominantly triangular in the ancient states of Asia, only to be nearly completely abandoned in favor of European designs. It sucks, but luckily we still have Nepal fighting the good fight. Except, if you're a flag vendor, reproducing the flag from Nepal is a giant pain in the ass. Sure, you could go to the extra effort to make sure you get the proportions exact, or you could just kind of fake it and add a bunch of white space to the end. This has been done so often that it's kind of become an inside joke in vexiology circles. Yeah, they're a fun bunch. But it can also be offensive. People from Nepal have been understandably upset when the budget version of their flag is used in an official capacity. So have you worked out where I'm going with this? What could I possibly be setting up? Can you take a guess at what the flag from Nepal looks like on the flag of the United Human Federation? Yep, it might be a little hard to see, but they screwed it up here too. It could be worse, Nepal. You could have been one of those 30 countries whose flag is hidden behind the emblem. But we're not done yet, because if you keep looking at this horrible flag, you'll notice something else. A few of the flags seem to be repeated. In fact, the whole thing repeats itself midway through. Whoever was designing this flag apparently ran out of other flags and just started over. Eventually though, as we get further and further into the future in this sequence, this flag gets replaced with another version, which while a bit better visually, loses any symbolism or meaning whatsoever. All the national flags included on it have been replaced with different colored dots in a seemingly random pattern. The English on the center emblem has also been replaced with what looks like a bunch of alien languages maybe. Some of those might be languages from Earth, I really can't tell. But if you've ever left a comment on this channel arguing that it does make a bit of sense for English to be on a flag because it's the most popular language or whatever, would you be okay with whatever this is if someday it replaced English? Don't you feel just a little marginalized by this choice? Now, overanalyzing flags from across alternate worlds is a favorite pastime of mine, and you might ask, does any of this really matter, and maybe it doesn't. But I love seeing the political changes on Earth reflected in the flags of the future. It makes any world more believable and real. For example, if you're paying attention during the mission to investigate the event horizon, you'd find out that the United States now has 55 states, or that the European Union has expanded into some type of federation, or that Australia added representation of its aboriginal population. Did any of these details matter in the end? Eh, not really. Where they're going, they don't need eyes to see, flags, or anything else, but it was still a cool detail. By contrast, if you pay attention to the flags during the foundation of the United Human Federation, all you're gonna learn is that nobody really cared about its iconography or national identity. That it was just really lazy. But if you don't believe me, here's one last piece of evidence. At some point after the City of a Thousand Planets was shot off into space, Valerian and Loreline, two soldiers in the United Human Federation, visit the station for the first time in a while. They ask for an update on its population and demographics, and this is how the computer responds. To the south are the submerged parts with 800 species living in all kinds of liquids, such as the peaceful Polon farmers who grow cobalt. Now that's not an answer. That's trivia. It'd be kind of like asking, hey computer, update me on the demographics of the United States. And the reply was like, the United States is home to 328.2 million people, such as the peaceful farmers of Sandusky, Ohio, who like water parks. Would that give you a good understanding of the demographics of America? It's reductive, a little insulting, and lazy. So by now I have proven that the United Human Federation is the laziest interstellar government. But that of course is just my opinion, and even though I and I alone ride a mighty truthosaurus, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Is the United Human Federation not lazy, just misunderstood? Is it acceptable to slap every flag onto a new flag and call it a day? And why are there so many water parks in Sandusky? 
Let me know in the comments, and until next time, this has been Incoming. In Incoming, the Templin Institute discusses the theories and ideas found across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.